Double double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. How can we spook? And what makes the perfect ghost story? All of these questions will be answered in this video. But first, a little warm up. Let's play statues. You'll need to think of a different Halloween character each time. You might wish to consider zombies, ghosts, witches, or objects like enchanted broomsticks. Halloween has a magical aspect after all. On the count of three, I'm going to change into one of those beings. One, two, three. You can also move this game on and play with friends if you're in a big group. Stand on either side of the stage. On the count of three, become a character. Then, make a noise. Cross the stage, interacting with one another. You've essentially got a zombie walk. So what makes the perfect ghost story? Well, a couple of things. Tone, atmosphere, and shocks. Let's break these down. Tone. You want to create a sense of suspense. You want to give your reader or audience, if you're performing it, a reason to stay invested. The ghost part of the ghost story doesn't have to happen instantly. In fact, it's better if you layer it and make a jump scare for the reader to go, ooh, it's a ghost. Think about setting. Where are your characters? Could they be in a haunted house? And if so, how is that house haunted? Think on descriptive terms. The weather, is it raining heavily? Is there thunder? Inside the house, think about the senses. How does it smell? Is there a soup broth boiling in the kitchen? Are there cobwebs around the corners of the rooms? Is there a creaky floorboard? The little details in ghost stories all add up to make a powerful impact on its reader or audience. And this is what you should tap into. Here are some horrific words to use. Gore, grim, gruesome, demons, blood curdling, spine tingling. Atmosphere is a crucial part of ghost stories too. Performance wise, it's easier to do with music and sound effect cues, as well as lighting. Is it dark? Is it grey and light like you're in the past? It may not be a haunted house, it could be in a lonely field or somewhere far away and remote. So you may wish to immerse yourself in such atmosphere right now. If you were to just sit still and look around you at the room, What's in the corner of your eye? What can you hear? I can hear silence, well, apart from my own voice. What can you smell? What can you touch? When it comes to the shock, what leads them to discovering the ghost? And who is the ghost? Does the ghost have a link to one of their relatives or is the ghost a projection of themselves in the dead? Ghost stories can become immediately dark at very twisted points, so explore that and have fun. A question from me, how can you subvert ghost stories? And by that I mean, how can you make the one you write or perform unique and different from everyone else's? Could the idea of a ghost, or our idea of it, be wrong? Are they actually just really friendly creatures? In different cultures, there's different perspectives on it. Some ghosts can be informed by a good life and are just coming back to celebrate something. Can you imagine? Otherwise, sometimes they're there to guard something or seek revenge upon a person in the life they lived. At which point I think about Harry Potter and a character called Moaning Myrtle. I would love to read a ghost story that you write, in which case you can send it to yesletskids at gmail.com. Ooh.